I hope you're all doing well today. I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this video. We are looking here at a limit evaluation using Taylor series where we will center around a equals 1. What's the question? Limit as x approaches 1. Natural log x divided by x squared minus 1. You know if you put that 1 in places of x, you'll have an indeterminate form 0 over 0. You can use the Le Hopital's rule and easily evaluate it. But the task is to use the Taylor series centered around a equals 1. What's the template for Taylor series? You know the nth root derivative always with the a value x minus a to the power of n and divided by n factorial. You will do that for what you see here in play. You're not going to do an expansion of x squared minus 1. You will do an expansion of natural log x. The zero order derivative of natural log x is going to be just natural log x. The original function, when you put 1 in it, you're looking at natural log of 1. Remember, again, a equals 1. The first order derivative is 1 over x. When you put 1 in here, you're looking here at a 1 over 1. The second order derivative of natural log x, you're doing the derivative of 1 over x. It'll be minus 1 over x squared. You're putting a 1 over here and you'll get a minus 1 over 1. The third order, and I think we can go up to fourth order derivatives. The third order will be, well, a 2 over x cubed. Just use the power rule and you can easily figure this out. This will be a 2 over 1. Lastly, the fourth order derivative, you will have here a minus 6 over x to the power of 4. You put 1 in here, you're getting a minus 6 over 1. But let's simplify this. This is a 0, that's a 1, minus 1, 2, and a minus 6. What are these values? These are the values which are coming right over here. When you expand natural log x, those are your coefficients along with, of course, this is a coefficient component too, but this right here is your variable component. You have a 0 times x minus 1, a is equal to 1 to the power of 0 divided by 0 factorial plus 1, that's your next coefficient, times x minus 1 to the power of 1 divided by 1 factorial. We write here minus 1 times x minus 1 to the power of 2 divided by 2 factorial. Obviously, we write there at the 2, 2 times x minus 1 cube over 3 factorial minus, and we'll come over here, 6 x minus 1 to the power of 4 over 4 factorial. I want to clean this out because I have to still evaluate this. When I clean it all out, what am I getting? This is zeroing out. Here I'm getting really just a plus x minus 1, but I'm keeping it in parentheses for a specific reason. From here, minus 1 over 2, I'll just write x minus 1 whole square divided by that 2. And look over here, 2 divided by a 6, which is a 3 factorial. You can simplify that. That'll be x minus 1 cube over 3. 2 divided by 6 is a 1 over 3. Last item right over here, minus x minus 1 to the power of 4. You have a 6 divided by 4 factorial, 6 over 24. That's an over 4. That's my expansion, and you know it would continue on. But I've limited everything here to n equals 4. And now let's evaluate our limit. Limit, as x approaches 1, the essence here is you're bringing the expansion into your limit. This right here is my expansion forget the zero, it's irrelevant. x minus 1, keep this parenthesized, minus x minus 1 whole square over 2 plus x minus 1 whole cube over 3 minus x minus 1 to the power of 4 over 4 all divided by x square minus 1. Now, look at your denominator and rewrite it in a different way. Write it in its factors. x squared minus 1 is equal to x minus 1 times x plus 1. Why am I doing it? Because I can isolate an x minus 1 from the numerator expression and I can remove this denominator x minus 1. This right here is the term which is creating a 0 in the denominator and leading to a problem. Remember x is equal to 1, 1 minus 1 is a 0. If you eliminate this term, you're left with a positive term here only and you can never have an indeterminate limit form anymore. Look here in the numerator, isolate x minus 1. When I isolate it, I'm getting from here a 1. From here, I'm getting a x minus 1 over 2. From here, I'll get a plus x minus 1 whole square over 3. From here, x minus 1 cube over 4. Close it out, and then you have this x minus 1 and x plus 1. You will cancel this out. Now look at what remains. Apply your limit. Limit as x approaches 1. When you put x approaching 1, 1 minus 1, 0. This will 0 out. This will 0 out. This will 0 out. 
what in essence will remain is this one in the numerator and you can see it one minus zero all of that is irrelevant the only thing relevant here is a one so let's complete this right over here for you the limit as x approaches one you are left with one in the numerator and you have x plus one in the denominator everything else zeroing out you'll get here a one or two and that will be your answer for this limit evaluation you could have done it easily by le hopitals and you know you can so this answer here should be right one or two is good especially with us centering everything around a equals one for the taylor series expansion of natural log x for verification and confidence purposes we can do everything over here by means of the le hopitals rule and i'll do it right here for you at the very bottom you've already seen the procedure and it doesn't matter if i've erased it we're looking at here if you do natural log x over x squared minus 1 and you put 1 in places of x you're getting a natural log of 1 which is a 0 divided by 0 you would do the derivative of the numerator and the denominator from here you'll get a 1 over x from here you'll get a 2x and obviously you can put 1 at the end you can easily simplify it you're getting 1 over 2x squared when you put 1 over here in places of x you end up with 1 over 2 and you know that's good it easily verifies that for us and that's all I'm showing you here in this video. I hope you all have a great day. Thank you for watching.